Save yourself a whole lot of tears Stop trying to figure out who was wrong and who was right Got to move along, baby, yeah, that's right You've got to roll with the punches you got to go with the flow Tear it in half. Oh, the one way that you can clear your tormented mind. Stop thinking he was just the one of a kind. You gotta roll with a bunch of Ooh, You gotta go with the flow. I said, go with the flow. Staring at that old photograph Walking around the neighborhood You're gonna, gonna tear it right in half Only one way you can clear your tormented mind Stop thinking he was just the one of a kind You gotta roll with the punches
that's the only way to go Only way to go They keep 
saying hello hello welcome to another session of live talking blues live talking blues tv right here for you now this is our next guest is a man that has been called the king of grit for his unusual mix of juke joint blues and cabaret now his rich quirky and inspired down home blues became well known to the blues audience through his work with the legendary louisiana red would you please welcome from the green room, little Victor. Come on in. What's happening, man? Hello, hello. Hey, Cap. Hello, hey. everybody. Hi, how you doing? Pretty good. Try not to catch corona, you know. Uh, I don't want to catch <laughs> corona, but yeah. It looks sunny where you are. I mean, you're in you yeah, aren't you? I know. You're in great I'll, I'll right? live, you know, I'll, I'll live by the beach in the tropics of England. The oh Republic of God. Brighton and Hove. I moved here a few years ago, and I love it. You know. Yes. Now, now, listen. I'm looking at this um, this banner gone down at the bottom, and there's a little discrepancy because you said that someone did a Wikipedia on you. Oh yeah, I, I don't know. One day I was just looking for stuff, and I appear on Wikipedia, and I say, "Oh wow." Now, and when you really I did a lot of stuff. Okay, some albums I did, some awards and prizes I won yeah. are not there. But what, the, when were you born? pretty much, you know, everything right. So, hey, no complaints. <laughs> you you were born the 31st of January, yeah? Yeah, well, it's a, okay, let's say so. We don't know. Okay. But that's uh, so not 1967. My mom says 31st of January. My passport say uh, February the 2nd. So I don't know, <laughs> to be honest. On what my year? American passport, I have 31st of January. And, you know. I also have my mom's Italian, uh, became an Italian citizen in uh, 98, and it says February the 2nd, so go figure. <laughs> what That's why when I, was, when I was a kid and I was collecting blues albums, you know, yeah. I was reading histories of all blues, and nobody knew exactly the date. You know, Louisiana Red wasn't sure. A lot of exactly. black bluesmen from the South, born in the 20s or even before that, they didn't have birth certificates. So uh, I was probably born November 23rd or 27, <laughs> not in 32 or not in 33. I don't know. <laughs> but you weren't born in 1967, were you? Yeah, well, I know the year. Yeah, the okay, year. Okay, okay. No now, doubt about it. I said, oh, I, I must have read it wrong because it says something that you were you were studying blues in at 14 and 1950s but i think what it was no you it's not in blues yeah i wish i wish now nah. well yeah exactly but you i mean but you start you started playing playing guitar you started playing harp before guitar though did you Which well my first? first instrument i couldn't play anything you know i was singing <laughs> i remember <laughs> i was singing when i was 13 years old yeah uh, i was singing in the 50s rock and roll band called the sunbeams and we did right. everything out of the sun records catalog you know uh -huh. But after a couple, I couldn't really sing, but I was good looking. I had the big palm, you know, I have the moves, but then uh -huh. I learned. 
So, you know, because in the band, they were all great musicians, but nobody was really a singer or a frontman. So, you know, uh -huh. uh, after a couple of years, I got quite good. Yeah. And I realized yeah. that what I really loved was the blues, was the stuff Sam Phillips recorded at a studio uh -huh. in Memphis, 706 Union Avenue, before Elvis ever walked in. That's you know? right. Yeah, before Elvis became, well, before yeah. he even... So you're saying that Sam Phillips was uh, was um he was what did Elvis copy him or did he get some of his well you know Sam Phillips moved to Memphis Tennessee from Florence Alabama uh, uh -huh. because he wanted to record black musicians uh, especially mm -hmm. blues guys great blues guys so he opened a studio and that wasn't called the Sam you know was called the Memphis Recording Service and it did some work for label as chess in Chicago uh -huh. or rpm in california you know it was recording all the black blues guys he could find actually what he really liked was the gritty blues you know the gut bucket stuff it would go to church park and that's how he spotted i don't know uh dr ross or all the gritty guys wow. so he was doing that and if you listen to the early blues recordings man he recorded some of the best music ever he didn't want to record white guys but the problem is he was getting Howlin' Wolf. He got Howlin' Wolf signed. As soon as uh -huh. Howlin' Wolf had a break, he left for Chicago. Sam Phillips, B.B. King, he left, you know. The thing is, See. black artists, as soon as they could get a hit or a break, yeah. they will leave the South and they will go up north looking for better conditions, you know. Better conditions. Can you blame them? I know. Because, no, I mean, they, well, you know. Well, some yeah. of them got disappointed because, actually, Jim Crow was everywhere. A lot of folks That's nowadays. It, yeah. Think, that was only in the south but actually segregation was all over in america of course it's true was, this is true was it's when they came to that in mississippi and tennessee so when yeah. elvis walked in sam phillips said mm, he's a white guy but it looks like a black guy he dresses like one of them same hair it's very shyish so you know he knew if he could have this music played by a white guy you know was something that we haven't seen before and the rest yeah. is history I actually, I'm collecting records. I um, just did a compilation called Elvis Stole My Job and what? features all the black artists Elvis kind of copied or, you know, got inspired uh, from and all that. Because let's face it, when Elvis came uh -huh. on national television in January 1956, wow, it was a big shock for the world, you know. I know. But that, well, actually, before Elvis, only black guys would perform this type of music. I know. Moving like that, yeah. dressing like that, you know. Yeah, of course, that's right. Harry Glover, a lot of you know, black producers and our A and R man. Uh -huh. Elvis was a mild version of Wynonie Harris. Wynonie Harris had the curly lips and the was doing it in the forest, and probably Elvis just saw him live in Bill Street and copied the moves, you know. You also, see, you gotta know Elvis was a big gospel fan, and that's when right. You church, when you have a church, especially down south, I feel the Holy Ghost. How? Oh, I feel it. Yes. You know, that's the way a preacher, a country preacher, will move during. He Sunday would go Sunday. to the black churches, old Elvis, didn't he? Oh yeah. Well, he used to go to the white church, but black churches and quartets were actually copies of black church. Even the material was the same stuff. You know, you had the white yeah. version and the black version. It's like yeah. Pat Boone doing Tutti Fruity, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, you uh -huh. know, Little Richard was always grateful because Pat Boone opened doors for him and a lot of black it. guys. So, well, you know. so, did the, so did the Rolling Stones for, for a lot of black well, musicians over yeah, the years. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah. But you don't think so? They didn't send thing back. I mean, the Rolling Stones had Muddy Waters opening for them in, in the 70s. Without him, they wouldn't have no name for the band and nothing to play on the first three oh, albums. Oh, yeah. So. This is true. This is true. I know. So, okay. I, know. I have, a, a, you know, I, I think two different ways about these guys. They did a lot for the blues. They did a lot for themselves. They become yes. multi-billionaire and they gave peanuts like the crumbs off the table to black guys, you know. I know. So and some of them died penniless, some of the black blues. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. But, you know, I it's know. the same thing with classical artists as Chopin. Chopin died That's poor. Bernstein yeah. became a millionaire playing his music, you know. Uh, Van Gogh, the painter, he never yeah. sold a painting while he was living. He died That's poor. Right. And, well, he sold a painting, but then the man wanted the money back because the wife didn't like it. So he almost had... He almost sold the painting. You know, so. <laughs> but, you know, let's talk about other things. So when I was 16, I realized that what I really mm -hmm. liked was the blues, and I started playing harmonica. 
and uh, so you take that harmonica onto a yeah, microphone. Yeah, you yeah, always it? play a harmonica. <laughs> well, let me see one that works, maybe. <laughs> because you know, I was singing, and I, 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 I was born with ADD, ADHD, that's like uh -huh. you know, kind of stuff. So I wasn't very manual, but harmonica was pretty good with my mouth and my tongue. Yeah. You know, so <laughs> hey, this is for me. And I played with a lot of black guys down in Memphis, Tennessee. I used to spend summer holidays in Memphis. My cousin yes. lived there. Uh, and, you know, you old that black blue. Where, where, you know, where, you where were you born, though? What's My cousin, Paul Falco, he has, uh -huh. a, a, I'm going to say, art, blues of Billy bands called Panther Birds, inspired the Cramps, Nick Cave, uh -huh. and all these guys in the 70s, early 80s. Oh, really? But before becoming a musician, it was filming. He had a company called Televista. He filmed Arel Burnside and his juke joint in 1972, but he called it Honky Tonk. Honky Tonk uh -huh. and juke joint is the same. But it's nowadays, the same yeah. people assume juke joint is blues, blues joint and Honky Tonks were come to Western white joints. But uh -uh. this, I don't know why in the 80s and the 90s, but a Honky Tonk could be black or, or white, you know, could play blues. Same thing for a juke joint. You have white juke joints where people would play country music, you know. So Yeah, which is Honky Tonk. And then juke you know, Honky would be... Tonk, if you see it online, that's what my cousin Phil was. Our Al Burnside in his Honky Tonk or juke joint. Yes. And is actually singing and playing guitar through the juke box. He has a juke box, you know, yes. two, with two uh, entrants. So it will unplug uh -huh. the speaker, plug a microphone in one and, and the guitar uh -huh. and play all night. And every song lasted 20 minutes. I remember first time I went to a juke to his juke joint actually uh, when I was fourteen or fifteen years uh -huh. old. You know the songs were endless. It was like wow, yeah. like African music. You know, I yeah, lived in yeah. Paris. I have a lot of African friends from Africa, and they have those gathered around. Music starts uh -huh. about five p.m. and it lasts until six a.m. the next morning. You know, it's like wow. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I mean, listen. You you. So what did you call Little Victor's juke joint? That, that the band that was just um, yeah well you know cute. because i wanted people uh to give them a name of course number uh -huh. one was a marketing because when you're only little victor on the poster you put little victor little victor's juke joint blues okay you're ready to get you know hey. i got you i got you and also i, mean, I wanted people to know uh -huh. what type of what type of music i i, I do you know so little victor's juke joint you get pretty much the idea, you know. Well, we I'm got saying? we we got you on a video playing with uh Louisiana Red and Little Victor's Jr. Oh Jones. yeah, Should Louisiana Red that? was one of my idols when I, I started. Know. You know, uh, Louisiana Red. I remember when I was thirteen or fifteen, I bought a copy of this record on roulette called the uh -huh. Lebanon Front Porch Blues, and yes. wow, that was a big revelation for me. I decided to play guitar. I never wanted to learn how to play guitar, actually. Uh -huh. I just wanted to uh, play what Louisiana Red plays on the record. So when I was 13, I became a Louisiana Red fan. When I was 24, I saw Red performing live. Whoa. When I was 34, you know, I started playing with him. It was actually singing in my band. Yeah, well, let's, I have, remember. A, let's, let's have a look at this. Yeah. Thou shalt give a big rouse and blues music award welcome to multiple nominees Louisiana Reed and the band from Back to the Black Bayou, Little Victor's Juke John. This goes down to Louisiana Council. <laughs>
Yeah, this is the strongest song out of the album. I, the first album I recorded with Brad, you know. I was his band leader and right hand man for eight years. I played mm -hmm. with him from 2004, 2005 until he died. Yeah, and I always yeah. played with my band uh, an opening set, you know. I would do like four or five songs just to break uh -huh. the bias. And great. also to make sure the monitor was okay, the sound yeah. stage was good. So when the ice was broken and the crowd was kind of warm, now uh -huh. ladies and gentlemen, the sorrow of show, blah, blah, blah. And I used to play a song, of course, called Won't Be Back No More. And it goes like this. Uh -huh. You know, it's based on the classic Mississippi catfish blues scene, but you know, everybody recorded it, Muddy Waters, Recorded She's All Right, Still a Fool, Rolling Stone, yeah. uh, uh -huh. Baby King call it Fishing After Me. You know, it's like uh -huh. Renaissance painters. They all painted, you know, Virgin Mary with Baby Jesus, right? So That's it. I had it's a song version. that I used to do <laughs> with the band before calling Red on stage, you know, calling mm -hmm. him up on stage. That goes like this. Okay. Hill I'm going, hill I'm going, baby, don't you wanna go? Well, I'm living in the morning, won't be bad, won't be bad, won't be bad no more, won't be bad no more. So one night, Louisiana Red just walked on stage in the middle of the song, grabbed the mic, and started singing a different song, and that was Black Bayou, you know. So mm -hmm. we recorded the song as Black Bayou, but we used my arrangement, so like this. So that makes my song different from the Baby King version, the Mighty Waters version, etc. And the album was actually very successful. For some reason, um, start selling a lot. We sold over fifty-five thousand copies. I mean, real yeah. records, not downloads back then. Yeah, 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 exactly. Well, fifty-five thousand downloads don't get you nothing. <laughs> now, nah, hell, maybe uh, for a million, I can buy me some chewing gum. But, that's you know, it. That's, I know. That's, that's, you know we can talk about that later. Let's talk about yeah. that later because that's crazy. Well, it was yeah. really unexpected because I also produced the the record, you know, as yeah. a producer of the record, etc., etc. So, what label was it on? Uh, we did it for a small label called uh, Blues Town, and that was uh -huh. in Nopoda, Norway. Norway is the biggest blues festival in the world. That's it. The no, Chicago yes, Blues Festival is just as big, but Chicago Blues Festival is free. No Totem Blues Festival, you got to pay yes. a lot of money, like $200, $300. So, you know. And you and, played and at the Records in yeah. Germany, I think after the first uh, 15,000 copies, uh -huh. wow, Roof Germany got hip to it. So it was actually um, Blues Town, the original label I had a deal with, um, released the masters to Roof Records, and Roof Records in Germany brought it to another level, you know. Exactly. But I think the. Um, the album sold a lot in the alternative rock, you know, uh, circuit. The so uh, red as the next R.L. Burnside, you know. So it took two years for the blues world to catch up with Back to the Black Bayou. We won yes. a Grammy in Germany, not a uh -huh. blues Grammy, a real Grammy. Real Grammy. And yeah. the uh, Record Critics Award. And uh -huh. when we won, for example, the Never Have Blues, I won with uh, Herbert von Karajan. And the uh, uh, Vienna Philharmonic Orchestra, oh, uh, yes. Johnny Cash, the Amer the last recordings, and then Little Victor and Louisiana Red back to the book. By wow, something to make Mama proud. That's and it, definitely the equivalent <laughs> of a Nobel Prize for records called the um, uh, how can I say? Oh yes, yeah, called the uh, Grand Prix du Disque. 
So uh -huh. I won yes. with red and I went to the ceremony at the Maison de la Radio. And you know, I gave my 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 invitation, but I was like, oh Lord, they're gonna they're gonna kick me out, you know. Oh Lord, <laughs> it's like sir. <laughs> But I was bona fide, and I sat uh, beside Juliette Greco, the French chanteuse, and also um, Sonny Rollins, one for jazz, uh, Tina Riwen for world music. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I mean, wow. I do. And after two years, the blues were finally cut up with us. We had uh -huh. four stars on Rolling Stones magazine, and Rand wanted me to read all the great reviews. Victor, how many stars we got? Four, huh? What's the maximum? Five stars. Uh, Victor, you produced me a shit record. I'm going to get <laughs> Hey, look, Red. I look, turn the page. To them, five stars is Michael Jackson Thriller Remastered. Exactly. Okay. okay we have yeah. three stars on Downbeat, you know, the jazz magazine. Down, that's it. Yeah. That's How good. many stars we got, Victor? We got three stars. What's the maximum, Victor? Four stars. Oh, man. Uh, you suck, man. I got to get me. <laughs> okay. Look, Red. To them, four star is that. Miles Davis, kind of blue, four stars. Uh -huh. Okay, maybe I'll keep you for the next album. <laughs> so I was really glad because Louisiana Red moved to Germany. I'm over in the 80s, you know. It was okay, but it never had the fame and the success. It always deserved. Louisiana Red started to play in the exactly. late 40s. He yes. recorded with John Lee Hooker, uh, the Mighty Waters Band, Lil Walter, a lot of great guys, but he never got the recognition it really deserved you know yes I, I wonder why is that some of some of them just had the labels and the marketing and all that type of thing and sometimes well, it's just they luck never as well. in one place long enough you know yes. you have feet so it would record some and they will move from uh, uh, uh -huh. Detroit to Chicago do some recordings go back to uh you know uh, uh mm. some other place it was from you know mm. uh uh, Pittsburgh. I mean, it was born in, um, I think, in Alabama, but his in grandma Alabama, yeah. lived in Pittsburgh. So when he was nine, after he lived for nine years in an orphanage home, he moved uh -huh. to Pittsburgh. And when he was 13, he went to work uh, uh, in Detroit at the Ford mm -hmm. plant because he looked like he was a big guy. He said he was 18, but he was 14 and a half, you know. My so he had a very interesting life. And Grant was one of my early idols you know my, my yes you said he's you know. your mentors yeah yeah, yeah. And, and actually he, I, I wanted to play guitar just to play what Louisiana Red played on that album called the front porch low down blues you know? I'd love to hear it man I yeah, absolutely yeah. Oh, love check to it hear. out on roulette okay record. actually roulette record was a rock and roll label that didn't have blues guys yeah but I met a lot of blues guys that say you know when I was a teenager my first record was Louisiana mm -hmm. Red right on red it's a civil rights song uh -huh. I left my home in Pittsburgh and uh, Vicksburg, started traveling north. I made it to New Orleans when it was about civil rights, right on to your freedom, make yes. the northern state your home. Uh -huh. So, and a lot of white kids, you know, they used to go to the record store and they used to buy everything on roulette, you know, because that was a rock and roll label. So they bought Louisiana Red and they discovered the blues. Actually, I met mean, a lot, a oh, lot by of By accident, guys. yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, by accident, they discovered yeah. the blues thanks to Louisiana Red on Roulette. He had a song called Red Stream and allegedly sold more than a million, but he only had a coat, a bottle of bourbon, and a guitar <laughs> for the recording. So, you know. A coat, a bottle of bourbon, and a guitar. I love that. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, better than a lot of guys, you know. Mm -hmm. hey. You know, if you would have recorded for Jeff Bezos, probably didn't have to. He would have to pay for the bourbon and the coke. <laughs> Shall we have another look at a video of that? See, I want to see this one. That, um, you, you made a song called Luan at the Blues Kitchen session. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh no, this is Luan. This is uh, no, this is. I ain't got no place to go from the TV show I did on, uh, for national television in Spain a few years ago. They asked me to do uh, 55 minutes of my own music. And this is called Ain't Got No Place to Go. I'm Ain't Got hard. No Place to Go. Okay, yeah, that's the last one. Okay, let's have a look.
when you do that uh, well you know uh, yeah thanks to so back cool. to the black buyer i could move That's to it. spain i had a house at the beach in barcelona barcelona and uh tv trash which is national spanish television asked me to do a studio blues thing that was recorded live at the recording studio 55 minutes of my own compositions and that got me quite a lot from the spanish guy it's the spanish bmi you know uh -huh. So every six months, I'm still getting money because uh, it was broadcasted prime time, uh, 10 o'clock. That's dinner yeah. time in, in Spain. Actually, early dinner in Spain. Early dinner in Spain, that's right. So the first <laughs> time didn't earn me a lot of money. But you know, thanks to repeat, they're still broadcasted like 2 o'clock in the morning when nobody really watches. It still makes me some right. Hey, that's it. Did, did they stop the that during those Corona? Old them Soniacs, everybody's still up at night, you know, uh, in <laughs> Catalonia. They, they've they been, you know, watching this over and over again for the past seven, eight years. So <laughs> I bet I know some people over there who definitely watched it. Um, you ever heard of Lito, Lito Blues Band, Lito Fernandez, but that's more Andalusia. That's uh, more right. No, Blues yeah. Andalus. No, no, no. But uh, mm -hmm. I'm playing in Andalusia. I'm playing at the Rock and Race. I, I, I uh, headline it. I was the lighter at the Mijas Blues Festival a little while ago. Oh, yeah. But yes, I know. But story about the song. You know, I used mm -hmm. to uh, play with uh, Uber Sumlin. Uber, he was a guitar player for Hollow mm -hmm. Wall for 20 oh, years. Until yeah, he died, okay. You know? And I remember Uber couldn't drive. Was Back then, I could drive. Now, I, I got hit by a fan. I lost peripheral sight. You know, looks Did good you? on the. Yeah, was a ceiling fan. I used to be a pretty wild performer, so I would climb on top of counters. And I remember <laughs> at the Waco's Roadhouse in Waco, Texas, uh -huh. that was in '93. You know, they had oh, a okay. big old ceiling fan, American in a big old iron. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yep. it was off, but everybody was smoking back then. You know, in the '90s. Yep. So some wise guys just turned on the fan and I got hit by a fan, but you know, it was like a split, was a carry, like a horror movie. You know, I had blood all over the thing, but people did not believe it because I used to fake heart attacks. I had stretchers, you know, taking me with the amp. Just say, oh, it's probably another trick, but no. So it looks good on my body, you know? Little Victor got hit by a fan, but it was a silly uh -huh. fan. So I'm blind as a bat. No, it's yeah. funny when you say you got hit by a fan. I thought you got a fan, you know, like, like yeah. a, a yeah, like an audience, audience, you know, music yeah. fan. Yeah, yeah, I I you, a, so, not a twirly fan. I thought you meant a human fan. 
when I could drive, I think you were something, you know, it was, uh -huh. it was uh, an habit drinker. So he lived in Austin. When I lived in Austin, Texas, I played with mm -hmm. you were something and I had to drive him around, you know, because he couldn't yeah. drive. So I have, when you play with the mole blues guys, it's not just you play with a musician, you know, it's like playing with your grandpa. That's you got to make sure it sits next to the toilet. It's got his yeah. pills. <laughs> He's got his Bible, yeah, you know, blah, 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 like Fred or, you know, hey, you have to pee pee. No, I don't have to pee pee. We cannot stop. No, 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 no. Okay. You know, 20 minutes. I have to pee pee. Oh, Lord. You know, <laughs> same thing. So, you know. Yeah. So, Hubert uh, played with Holland Wolf, and I remember he used to come to Austin, and he had a, uh -huh. a guest spot with everybody who played Amtones, and I had a uh -huh. Wednesday night at Amtones for a while. So, we became friends. And it would uh, every time he would come back to town, it would say, Victor, man, can you come? And I was driving him around and he would, you know, let uh -huh. me play harmonica with him. I learned so much just I looking know. at him. He never gave me formal lessons, but you know, when you play harmonica, you look, okay, this is he, okay, hey. I just absorb the I know the mojo, the the fang, you know. You sure and did. And the story. Agree. Uh -huh. One night, Uber was booked, uh, author, and I just went down there, you know, just mm -hmm. to see him. Hey, Uber. Oh, Victor, man. Uber never was a singer. He was mumbling something on the mic. I said, Victor, man, do you have your harmonicas? Yeah. Do you know any of Wolf's number? Yeah, I know them all, but I don't sing like Wolf. Say, well, I Nobody don't sing like, like Wolf either. <laughs> so I went down there. I paid my ticket, and I ended up uh -huh. working for free, playing harmonica and singing. And I remember... Uh, uh, no place to go is actually a ripoff for uh, Holland Wolf. Papa never long way from home. Papa never long way from home. No mystery, please don't do me wrong. But I couldn't remember the lyrics, so I uh -huh. made up something on the spot, and that became I ain't got no place to go because I couldn't I remember this. Paul Boy. <laughs> <The lyrics. laughs> uh, I never actually, I recorded it in California uh -huh. with Kim Wilson and all these guys, but I, I, I've never issued. So maybe next album, I'll do a song. But I yeah, love but, Uber, man. Yeah, uh, man. Uber, after a gig, said, Victor, man, I'm uh -huh. going to have Night Mercy fight at 3 o'clock in the morning. Said, Hubert, I'm going to have Night Mercy fight. Eat now. Oh, man, I got to get me some F double O D. Okay. But F double O D. <laughs> I know a place, and you all the place. So I'm going Austin Q Club, open all night, you know, uh -huh. open all night. But the guy at the grill was going home, you know. Oh man, I'm giving <laughs> you were something, you know, the guy who played with Holland Wolf, Mighty Waters, Jimmy Reed. So, man, it's three o'clock in the morning. I don't care if you're here with Jesus, I'm going home. Oh, please, you know. So I'll give him $10 <laughs> tips. The guy, okay, puts the tablecloth on, puts the grill on again. And you, you. Were really read or write so well. Was taking a hopeful long time reading the menu, you know, like that's it. Say, Uber, order your food fast, you know. We're gonna yeah. get. And the guy was sharpening the knife. But that's man. it. And one thing about Uber, I love the man, you know. Uh huh. When the food came, no matter what it was, Uber would go, Victor, that's not what I ordered. Uber, shut up and eat. Eat exactly. <laughs> Um, uh, some great characters in some of those blues artists. Oh, it's yeah. such great, and you, you, you've traveled all over the all over the world. It seems like you and lived in quite a few places as well. I've been Cal around the block, Cap. Yeah. yeah well, my dad was in the Air Force. My dad's from Arkansas. He was a serviceman. He was in the um, Air Air Force in the sixties, uh -huh. and he met my mom in Italy. So I was born there, but I lived everywhere. I lived in Germany. I lived in Japan. You know, I, I'm a fly boy. I'm Air Force uh -huh. brat. Yeah, 90% ninety percent were blacks from the south because, as you know, in the military was no discrimination. White surgeon, black surgeon, brown surgeon, all the same. You know, we uh -huh. all green on the battlefield. So That's I, I didn't know what this was. I mean, I grew up. Sometimes I was the only white boy at school. <laughs> in some of the places, um. So yeah, but then you... we moved to Monticello, Arkansas, when it was ten, and Monticello. kids oh, did not play with white kids. You know that was weird for you know, but so you know, I remember you know my neighbor was playing guitar in the front porch as a kid, uh -huh. and my nanny Teresa, she was black. My mom couldn't, she didn't have milk, so I had a black nanny. I suck yeah. black milk. You know, we couldn't share a fountain, but you know it was. Okay. You can suck black milk. <laughs> 
Yeah. So, you know, to me, I, I, I'm, I'm called blind. I mean, you yes. Know, and it ain't about pigmentation. It's about soul. It's know? about the heart, isn't it? De def definitely. That's the, but I mean, definitely that black folks have something that white guys cannot. Can, for example, I knew when I started to play harmonica and guitar, I could sound like the thing. I like the shit. is my friends. Uh -huh. The singing. Oh, that's a long way. To be honest, I can sing beautifully, but the past 35 years, four years, I've been trying to sound uh, credible for the blues, you know? Yeah, yeah. It ain't and, how, how good you can sing, but are you credible? Can you get away with it, you know? As long as it comes from your heart. You sing exactly. the blues the way it's been given to you. That's your blues. That's your interpretation. That's how Thank you feel you. it. That's how you sing it, you know? That's why, I mean, the blues Amen. is for everybody. Thank <laughs> it is for everybody. Now, t tell me a little bit of the, about the Blues Kitchen sessions. Is that the Blues Kitchen here in London? Yeah, when I moved to England, you know, after Back to the Black Bay, I lived in Spain for a while. I did this yeah. TV show, and thanks to the money from the TV show, that's okay, it. Before moving to England, because they had a big crisis, money was on, bad, etc. I got uh -huh. a gig at the Blues Kitchen, and they shot this video. Uh huh. Lou, I, I read. I read that wrong the first time. I was jumping ahead yeah. of myself. I can't Should hear I have it. But it looks yeah, let's familiar. have a little listen. Oh, okay, have a little listen. <laughs> Mostly, yes. You know, I've never learned how to make bending the strings since Baby King came along. Uh, seems like it's the only way to play blues guitar, but actually not. No. You know, unfortunately, we see the blues from the rock guy's standpoint. You know, if Eric Clapton could fake it, oh, yeah, that's blues. Eric Clapton could not play this shit. When he plays Robert Johnson, it's ridiculous. He plays with a pick. I mean, come on. So, mm -hmm. okay, everything is, if the Rolling Stones like it, or if Eric Clapton or the rock guys in the 60s and the 70s, the rock mm -hmm. stars who made billions copying the blues, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so if it was okay in their, that's why Colors Gathmouth Brown was one of the best guitar player ever. Uh -huh. It's not in the book because, oh, the Rolling Stones could not play his music or Eric Clapton could not copy yeah. his guitar playing. So it's not in the book. Yeah. But, you know, one of... So I never really even tried to play like Baby King because when I started, you would go anywhere to any blues jam or, you know, a guitar center or a pound shop and everybody was playing the, the Baby King thing. And uh -huh. it's funny because I read an interview actually uh, was on this book, Blues All Around Me. Baby mm -hmm. King said, I could never play guitar like this. Before Baby King, a guitar player had to play three parts of guitar. And Baby King used to go and watch Sonny Boy Williamson play with Robert Jr. Lockwood and say, oh, man, I could never play guitar. 
but he had strong fingers and he was listening to the counter radio yeah. stations from Nashville. Yeah. And, you know, he didn't know the steel guitar, the lap steel was a guitar. Yeah. I mean, he thought the lap steel was a guitar. So he was trying to copy the country lap steel sound and play like this, no? But it only plays that. And he yeah. said, I never considered myself a blues guitar player. I always what would you teach your students? Guitar. What would you teach one of your students if they wanted to learn the blues? I mean, oh, what? number one, play out of tune. <laughs> Don't you ever play with a 440 tuner because that's the Nazi tuning. There was no 440 hertz, you know. That. So what are, they, what are you tuning? I'm tuning in low C. My E is a C. I see. I'll learn how to play in, in A and in E. My singing is better. If you're a white boy and you, okay, I know a few white guys, hey, yeah. they were with the gift. They open mm -hmm. the mouth and they sound like the shit, you know. Me, man, I open my mouth, uh, I sound like Pee Wee Herman. So it was no, a long too. way to sound, you know, <laughs> acceptable. And you don't have to sing like Wolf or this type of guys. Mighty Waters wasn't singing, was talking to you. Uh, 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 Whoa, yeah, you know, yeah, Latin yeah. Hopkins was talking. Robert Johnson was talking. Yes. Uh, Slim Harpo almost sounded white, and he was singing for the nose because he had the pipes. Billy Boy Arnold, Jimmy Reed. So all this fake, tough guy vocal. Uh, uh, this was like from the 70s guy, like, I don't know, man. Uh, uh -huh. Who's the guy, the, the guy from Sheffield, the British guy with the beard? Uh, Lord, I can from think. Sheffield. I never listened to any of that. Joe Cocker? Joe Cocker. You know, yeah, it was uh, it was forcing it. It could have probably sounded, I don't know, for my money, it probably would have sounded better without forcing it. You know, you don't force yeah, it. Yeah, I thought he just had that kind of style. You know, well, he, it was he a was big Ray Charles fan, of course. Yes, yes of course. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. then I think the drinks and the loud music, you know, the guys sure. behind him played pretty loud. So probably uh, he had to scream to hear. That's I don't know, it. Man. That's it. I never got into the rock blues thing or the white guys. I'm sorry. I, I, I know. It's, no, you know, we're good. I, I, we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Listen, I'm white good. myself, but you know what? My <laughs> guitar doesn't know it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. But it, again, your soul doesn't have any color. You know what I mean? No. You just As you long just... as you sound credible. But I totally skipped the rock blues thing. The white guys play hippies playing the blues. To me, I started with the real thing, you know. And when you know the real thing, uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. Uh, yeah. Well, but yeah, it was a long trip because I had to sound credible and I didn't have the pipe. So I had to find a way around it. You know, like Dr. John. That's Dr. It. John, he found a way around it so it could be cool and credible. And so my biggest problem with white folks doing blues was it? the singing. It, they could sound like the shit when they play guitar and harp. Man, I didn't like no white person singing blues, to be honest. When Elvis was singing a blues song, and it was rock and roll, rockabilly. It was cool, but it wasn't blues no more. You know what I'm saying? What? Can or you a song? Jagger, it was Big Jagger doing about... the blues, you know. So, <laughs> sorry. I, I'm hyper, and I had a big old cup of coffee because, you know, so Fantastic. Lord, I love it. Cheers, man. Can, you talking about how you play, how you play. Can you play? Your audience, Live Talking Blues audience, a song. Let's solo it. Just play us a song from one, whatever you like. Okay. I would like to do a number I have on 78 by Willa Cotton, and it's called Seem Like a Dream. The original was actually uh, recorded in the 1930s by a mandolin player. Okay, this is my own version. You know, Actually, when I learned how to play, it was like E. So it was like. have to play like piano player playing the bass they have to provide the whole accompaniment to the vocalist
always play the bass with my thumb. Sorry, I never played this guitar. I cannot play electric where I live. That's very fixed. That's ring. true. Yes, of course. I forgot you told Sorry. me that. Thank Can't you for that electric. because I really want to hear just a little bit of your playing. You know, it's so gorgeous. Well, you know, if I play with the band, I actually play the same thing, but you know, mm -hmm. I have other guys. I don't change mm -hmm. anything like Muddy Waters or Jolly mm -hmm. Hooker, Lightning Hopkins. They all play the same way, you know, because to learn acoustic guitar solo. So they just bought a guitar, an electric and an amp, mm -hmm. because when they moved to the big town, you know, playing acoustic on street corner or bars, and uh, they weren't cutting it. So they got an amplifier, That's an electric it, guitar, yeah. but they basically played the same thing, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm trying to keep this going. I learned from directly from Uncle Ben Perry. I remember when I was too young to go to a club, I could just peek through the window. I was playing for tips down on Bill Street, you know, Church uh -huh. Park. That was called mm -hmm. Hamden Park. And I play with Uncle Ben. He only played in the key of E and the key mm. of A. Really? So, you know, <laughs> only have two keys. And I bought him a capo. Say, Uncle Ben, you know, if you put a capo, you can play in F and G. Oh, yeah, thank you, thank you. He put it in his guitar case. After two weeks, you know, he never used to say, Uncle Ben, <laughs> you know, what about trying the capo? Oh, I'm not going to choke my baby guitar with this motherfucker. He opened the little <laughs> thing. He had seven or eight. And he said, you know, Victor, when I was younger, when I was your age, I used to play every key. Bad mistake. You know, really? I, if I don't get it in A, I'll get it in E. If I don't get it in A and I don't get it in E, I'll leave it alone. Leave it alone. That's it. You say, <laughs> you know, when you play every key, you are wasting your talent. You're wasting your energy. Yeah. Elmer James only sing in one key, in the key of D. So when he would hit them playing D, when he would hit that D, well, Lord have mercy. So uh -huh. back then, I didn't know what he meant, but now, you know, now you I get try it. And say, hey, he was right. I yeah. play in yeah. A, I put the capo, or I put yeah. it in open D or Wassipole or whatever uh -huh. it is. And, you know, less is more, but, you know, when you're young, you know, like a young puppy. Well, yeah. You're still around learning. The pole. Yeah. Now I know less is more. Yeah. If I don't get it in E, uh -huh. cap. I'll get it in A. That's it, man. <laughs> well, my E is actually a C natural, and my A, it's yeah. an F natural. Okay. So, piano player love me because I try to go down. I sound okay. better uh -huh. if, if I low down the keys. Actually, uh -huh. a lot of black guys with two and a half step down uh -huh. you know, or a full step down. On the blues forum, I hear, oh, this guy probably, their 78 doesn't turn right, uh -huh. blah. Because they go with the tuner for uh, for 40 hertz, and that was introduced by the Nazis. Hitler really liked his Wagner in 440. You're kidding. And when really? all the Nazis we decided not to hang to fight communism, moved <laughs> to America, you know, Nazi scientists that help us call win the Cold War okay. they were in, the, in Reagan's cabinet until the late 80s. All these guys, all Nazis that instead of hang, we hired. You know, hang or hire. We hang killed or hire. three or four, but the big guys, the big Nazi guys, moved to America and live. You know, hallelujah, yeah, great. Jesus huh? Christ! So what those guys it? helped introduce yeah. the four forty hertz tuner. But uh -huh. before that, <laughs> tuning was four thirty eight, four forty. Uh -huh. so I don't like Nazis. I'm sorry. You know, I don't think no, that's, that's quite all right. right. That's quite all right. We don't get too political or too religious on here. No, 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 no. I don't like the four forty standard. It's not I got I like the lower keys or when you listen to old guys, especially blue solos, uh -huh. they didn't tune with the tuner. They tune with the bird passing by. Ah, ah, oh, or with the train whistle. You know? The train. I but love that train on harmonica. Yes, solo, exactly. Of course, when a scientist 70 years later go with a modern yeah. tuner, oh, it wasn't tuned. Maybe the mm -hmm. 78,000 spin right, you know, whatever. Let them talk. Yeah. So you're focusing more on production at the moment as opposed to more well, touring. Well, to be honest, after I moved to Spain and they had a, 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 an economic crisis and they had, I lived in Barcelona, Barcelona, they had the Catalan independence with clashes, say, oh, I want to move 
out, you know. Yeah. You know, I'm like a polar bear. I'm following the eyes. I've been living all saw- my life. I lived in Germany. I lived in uh, France. I lived in, you know, in the yeah. States. Too, but in the States, to be honest, I went back to the States for a while after yeah. uh, Spain. But, man, it's very hard to make a living playing the type of music I play, you know. it's like Why is that? Because there's so many. When I lived in France, I was an artist, Monsieur L'Artiste. I like that. L'Artiste, yes. And in France, whenever you're not gigging, they give you 70 or 80% of what you're making. That's right. They do support the artists. Yeah, they do support. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I have a status. Hey, I want a Grammy in France. Come on. Yeah. In America, here you're 50 bucks. You pay for your drinks. Ah. You yeah. play from eight to two, no breaks, bring the PA. Yeah, great. I get you. I get you. Yeah, I get you. So, Kat, hey. after 25 years living in Europe and be paid good money, you know, and yeah. to go. in Europe, you get open bar. When I play, they hire a sound man. They That's put it. me and my guys in a nice hotel. They pay That's for it. hotel flights. They pick me up at the airport. They take, you know, in the States. Oh, Lord. Same here. Really? You play, you pay for your beers, you bring the PA. Yeah, you don't even get a pack of, you know, uh, yeah. potato peanuts. chips for free. Potato uh-uh. chips, the peanuts. Yeah. Free. Oh, we have water from the toilet. Here's a glass. Oh, know. no, Victor. Yeah, Listen, I, mean, don't... <laughs> I had that. Well, you know. Okay, from... I want to I wanna get get your information out to people, but I, before that, I want to have a look at Blind Man Boogie. Let's All have right. a look on stage. Cool. Patsy, can we have a look at that one? I want to see that. That's you live on stage, man. Go. on the Sunday and it I had a gig. I went yeah. to bed at four the night before. You oh know, I cannot God. sing before 1 p.m. I tried. I'm in the studio uh-huh. at nine. Ugh, just won't come out. Ugh. Yeah, I can hear that. Blah, man. Yeah, I know what and you're saying. We have no sound check, no nothing. It's just a line well, check. They have seven other bands. So basically, you know, I was, okay, it wasn't yeah. my amp or anything. I just plugged in and I yeah, tuned out for the second song. Yeah, yeah. I love how you got your mic, how the mic is taped onto your... Yeah, uh, I first started like Jimmy Reed acoustic, but I couldn't get the electricity. So I figured, "Mm." I saw a one-man band called Joe Hill Lewis, you know, and it had like a harmonica mic taped, duct tape on it. And I remember when I was a kid, I used to go and see Ezekiah and the House Rockers. My Mm -hmm. uncle was managing them. David Evans, University of Memphis, Dr. David Mm -hmm. Evans. He wrote a lot of books, you know, on Mm -hmm. blues. Etc. And I remember as a Kaya early was a big guy who was playing stand-up drums mm-hmm. and he was singing and he had a harmonica 
tape with electrician tape to the mic stand so it will sing it would do drum solo while playing the harmonica that's it and yeah. i said wow so i decided to uh duct tape actually my yeah. uh they say silas and gold but duct tape is silver so I, i've been the tape of the harmonica mic i use a green bullet i try yeah. lighter mics because my neck starts to hurt after all these years. Oh, uh, see, yeah. I really yeah, yeah, like yeah. the sound of the sure green bullet, you know, like yes. the very yeah. heavy mic. So uh, I, I try lighter mics for my neck, but the sound yeah. ain't there. I got yeah. you. Hey, you Victor, tell, tell me a little bit about the um, your DJing. And you've been collecting um, oh, yeah. 45 been collecting since 1977. Since 1978. It's been What's the Coco Mojo label? Yeah, okay. I used to DJ, you know, uh, spin my blues and rhythm blues records. I, I mostly uh -huh. have black music from the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, you know. I even had a lot of 78s, but the break, the very hard. You cannot DJ with 78s, the break. You need a different yeah. drum tone. So that's right. And uh, I've been spinning records for a long time. It was like yeah. an extra thing, you know. But money was really good in the 80s and the 90s because nobody had those records. And, you know, Nowadays, everybody is everything, you know. Well, they can get them all online and everything. Now you just go over to Spotify and all that yeah, sort of thing, yeah, isn't you it? Know. So Listen, nowadays, mm -hmm. uh, in the 90s, I decided to focus more on my musical career. Mm -hmm. And I kind of stopped. But um, I think I used to make tapes, cassette tapes from the decks, you know, at my uh, DJ sets. And yeah. just tapes burned up and dubbed and dubbed and bootleg, even end up on bootleg CDs. Really? And, the okay. tape will go for a hundred dollars man give me 20 and i'll make you a new one you know Jeez. so yeah it's crazy man. it's crazy yeah, so yeah, i think yeah. about five or six years ago rockstar records um yeah. in the uk uh got bought off by rhythm bomb in germany and they asked uh -huh. me to do uh, a few compilations to compile a few albums That's with it, stuff yeah. from a record collection you know uh-huh stuff that you never heard on cd or lps and stuff so mm -hmm. i decided and I use my old avatar, DJ Mojo Man. DJ Mojo, that's it. Yeah, I, Where I used can to they dress find off it? with a casual stage makeup, a turban, a cape, you know, the whole nine yards. Okay. And I was expecting to do maybe 10 or 20, right? Uh -huh. So they created a label called Coco Mojo Records. So yeah, far, it. I compiled 110 albums. <laughs> it's quite a lot. That, that that is quite a lot. I, Actually, I hope the royalties are good on that. You know, as nah, well. You know well I mean? Okay, uh, uh, shut mean? up, Victor. I, I'll take the yeah. fifth. No, yeah, it yeah, ain't yeah. the money, you know. But yeah, yeah. it's some extra, you know. When you do uh, hundred and ten, you know, I'll do you're an entertainer. Up. You get it from everywhere. You, where you know, you're just entertaining the people, and that's the great thing about. Yeah, that's about why it. I decided when I moved to England, you know, because yeah. I was tired of touring, you know, cat. It's very hard to travel with guitars and amps and pedals mm. and harmonicas and bring records and bring the clothes. So I decided to slow down and I got phlebitis on both of my legs. So yeah, yeah. I decided to focus more on production. That was when That's I first it. moved to England. And I produced like my friend Hardlock Brown, uh -huh. Canadian uh, James Harmon. We did yeah. a very successful record with Rusty Zinn and uh, Charlie Master White called Traveling with the Blues. Uh -huh. The album did really great. I produced a tribute to Little Walter called The Blues of Little Walter. I produced great. Jerry Roll Man. I produced uh, Juke and Gal and the Jackknife. I produced, oh, a trio from Holland called Little Hat. All great uh -huh. guys. I used to watch a TV show. I don't know if you know that. You know, when I was touring, I was four o'clock yeah. in the morning trying to go to sleep. I was zapping around and they had a show called Extreme Relooking. You know, they take mm -hmm. this girl, she doesn't look hot. She got thick glasses, bad hair, acne, you know, mm -hmm. uh, bad teeth. And they give her a nice haircut, you know, facial mm -hmm. makeup. With good wow. And she looks wonderful. I say, if I can do this with music, so. Exactly. I can do, I can make anybody sound great on record. Anybody. So ha have you got access? Can can we go to your website? Um, well, my website, to be honest, uh, needs some serious updating. But yeah, www.littlevictormusic.com. Yeah. Uh -huh. But most of my prizes and awards are actually on Wikipedia, Little Victor. You know, That's you it, have Wikipedia. some of my compilations. You have yeah. all my uh, productions, except maybe Little Hat and a couple of more. Okay. 
uh, all the records are played on produce, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm -hmm. The thing is, nowadays you don't sell CDs no more, Pat. You know, I know. so nobody's yeah. willing to put six, seven thousand for a producer. They go to the studio, they cut the live set, and they let the studio guy who mm -hmm. likes metallic or God knows what do the mix. Yeah, you know, great. Okay, it's like a Quentin Tarantino movie without Quentin. <laughs> Yeah, That's the cameraman, <laughs> you know, and the customer wrote the script. So you I decided what? to do more into uh, yeah. compilations because you know what? That artist can't complain. That's it. That's it. Well, let's watch one more video before we go. And we're going to let All you right. go. And just a minute. Sit, now, what is this? Well, this is called You Don't Know My Mind. Oh, yeah, that's a title track of my uh, Deluxe LaFi album. I did a record in 2018 that was, no, that's not, no, don't put this, please. It's terrible. Okay, Patsy, Patsy uh, he doesn't want, he doesn't want to play it. <laughs> this, but it sounds terrible. It was dubbed from TV, maybe with the telephone. Oh, I or, see, I see. You know, maybe there's okay. another version of my mind with the band I recorded it with. Or yes. maybe why you do the things you do, the medley I did with my band before moving to, that's a pretty good okay. video. It was okay. a night for dancers. And actually, you know, as soon as it started to play, all the tables got empty. What is this? I don't see what? anything. Okay. Whatever. No, no, she didn't put it. She but, didn't put it yeah. Up. If funny. I can't produce records, I produce my compilations. I'm working on a new album. Okay. I did a record called Deluxe Lo-Fi, and that was recorded in mono lo-fi. To me, well, lo-fi is like the yeah. black and white version of hi-fi, like color and black and that's white, it. you know? Yeah. And can they find you on, really... Sorry. on Spotify? Sorry, I was going to say where people can get, I hate get a Spotify. hold of things. I know it's on Spotify. It's a necessary evil because if you're not on Spotify, promoters and club owners don't even consider you. The yeah. thing is, I used to make 40000 50000 a year just with royalties before yes. Spotify. They pay me micro cents. I got 12 albums there. Zero, 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 zero point two micro cents. So if yeah. the Beatles would have to share a Spotify thing for the first album, they will have to split five quids six ways because they have yes, to pay. Yes, I know. Studio, you know? It's I crazy. Know. I understand I record companies don't make money, but you know, Spotify, this guy are making billions. I and know they, they are. And they don't even pay peanuts. So somebody should do something they're trying they're, they're, and they're i think they are trying to do something they are they're trying, trying to do hard better. enough they are not trying hard enough i know exactly but um but if we go to your website and, and we can get your audience to see you there are you going to be doing anything live no in the, in the buy my room? records from me little victor i'm on uh everyone okay little victor at uh hotmail.com buy my you know cat luciana yeah. red passed away muddy waters died Jolly Hooker left us, and to be honest with you, I, I don't feel too good myself today. Okay. So please buy my music while I'm still living. While you still going? That's right, man. That's yeah. right. The best thing is to buy music directly from the artist. So you know, okay. The music goes so, to the artist when you so buy from Amazon or platforms. Hello, I, yeah. I, we're not getting anything. That's yeah. it. Okay, fine. That's so. So you can email your little Victor uh, and little Victor and. and, and but on Facebook, you're called Victor Mac. I'm you? little Victor Mac. Yeah, my name, Victor Mac. Uh, uh -huh. I have a fan page on Never Go, Little Victor, but email is yeah. littlevictor at hotmail.com. Littlevictor at hotmail.com, you guys. I have Let's a get website. that. I'm featured on Old Music Guide, the Michelin yes. Guide for Musician. Uh, somebody put me on Wikipedia, etc. Actually, I always heard how Wikipedia anybody can write anything, you know. It's not true yeah. because I tried to add stuff. Yes. The next day was all gone. So okay. it ain't true. It's a bit of a legend. You can put anything, you know. Well, I got listen. I got bona fide. I did everything. And they said, uh-uh, uh -huh. has to be checked by three other guys that were checking the facts. So, you know. Okay. I couldn't well, even uh add my own picture. They told me I didn't have the right to do that. <laughs> Well, Patsy, Patsy, Patsy wanted to play another one of your videos. What about keep your hands out of my pocket? No, that's, no, that's, that's a jam. That yeah, no. How about why you do the things you do, the medley or something like my mind, the live version? I don't, uh, I don't anything, know. Anything. You know, there's a lot of videos out there. And well, we can not, get them. We can get them on YouTube anyway. So and yeah, your YouTube channel will be YouTube. Little Victor. Yeah. yeah. I get them on YouTube. So we're going to have to close anyway soon, Little Victor. Victor Mac, Mr. Victor Mac. So you go over to the YouTube and be Little Victor on YouTube, or you can yeah. go to uh, uh, visit, uh, at your email or at your hotmail, littlevictor.com. Um, email him 
at gmail little victor gmail.com no little that, victor hotmail i'm old school yeah hotmail little victor hotmail yes little victor hotmail.com definitely we, we can get in touch with you all you guys get in touch with Our this come fabulous to my shows. historical I'm man at while the he's still here. tonight in brighton i'm playing at the blues weekend saturday and sunday yes yeah, say that the, again because i was talking over you say okay it again. tonight i'm doing my hoot nanny at the bootlegger bar in brighton uh then I'm playing Friday and no Saturday and Sunday at the uh, Blues Weekend, you know, at the Bison Beach Bar, and I'm playing Sunday night at Shorts Bar in Camp Town. So you know, in Camp Town, yeah. Well, yeah. we're gonna have to make it over to Brighton to come see you because I got some mates. Yeah, there. come on to, down. I yeah, will definitely ball, come you know? on down. I'm gonna get one of your hoot nannies. Won't be this weekend because I'm gonna rest up a little bit. You know, always crazy. welcome. Let me thank know. you so much. So thank listen, you guys, for having me here. Thanks uh to patsy thank you kev and you know let's say let's say hello to patsy hey patsy what's happening hello you'll take care now and stay out of jail there's no oh, no we won't, we won't be in jail okay patsy take us home see you victor I'm